Today as a nation we grieve and today we as a people feel helpless. Helpless to stop these random acts of violence that seem to be getting less random by the day. You know, it may be the geographic proximity of Newtown to my hometown, or the fact that my children's ages average those of the 20 young children tragically killed on Friday, or the fact that my second son has Asperger's, or the fact that too many other facts associated with Friday's nightmare strike so close to home. For me, just like for you, there is no escaping the horrors visited upon those children and teachers at Sandy Hook. The events that occurred in a short violent outburst on Friday, December 14th, 2012, were so evil that no words that I know of have yet been invented to sufficiently describe the horror experienced by 20 precious first grade students, their heroic principal, their anguished parents, or the shocked New England town that will never be the same. There's no way to capture the final moments of these children's short lives or the loss and the helplessness their parents have to feel today. There's nothing they can do. There's nothing any of us can do to ease the pain this morning or to cause those children to run back into the loving arms of their family members this Christmas season. Soon we are going to be watching the burials of these babies. We will hold their parents up in prayer and we will hold our own children tighter as we thank God every afternoon as we watch our children walk off their school bus and into our arms. But every American must know, from this day forward, nothing can ever be the same again. We've said this before, after Columbine, after Arizona, after Aurora, after so many other numbing hours of murder and massacre. But let this be our true landmark. Let Newtown be the hour after which, in the words of the New Testament, we did all we could do to make all things new. Politicians can no longer be allowed to defend the status quo. They must instead be forced to defend our children. Parents can no longer take no for an answer from Washington when the topic turns to protecting our children. The violence we see spreading from shopping malls in Oregon to movie theaters in Colorado to college campuses in Virginia to elementary schools in Connecticut. It's being spawned by the toxic brew of a violent popular culture, a growing mental health crisis, and the proliferation of combat-styled weapons. Though entrenched special interests are going to try to muddy the cause in the coming days. The cause of this sickening mass shooting, like the others, is no longer a mystery to common sense Americans. And blessedly, there are more common sense Americans than there are special interests, even if it doesn't always seem that way. I say good luck to the gun lobbyist. Good luck to the Hollywood lawyer who tries to blunt the righteous anger of millions of parents by hiding behind twisted readings of our Bill of Rights. Our government rightly obsesses day and night on how to prevent the next 9-11 from being launched from a cave in Afghanistan or a training base in Yemen. But perhaps, just perhaps now is the time they start obsessing on how to stop the next attack on a movie theater or in a shopping mall or on a college campus, or in our children's first grade classes. The battle we now must fight, and the battle we have to win, is for the safety and the sanity of your children and mine. And that is a war at home that we must win. Of course, this is not all about guns. It's not all about violent movies. It's not all about video games. But we can no longer allow the perfect to be the enemy of the good in this case. And we must not excuse total inaction by arguing that no single action can solve the problem that will save our children. You know me. 
I am a conservative Republican who received the NRA's highest ratings over four terms in Congress. I saw this debate over guns as a powerful, symbolic struggle between individual rights and government control. And you know what? In the years after Waco and Ruby Ridge, the symbolism of that debate seemed even more powerful to me. But the symbols of that ideological struggle, they've been shattered by the harvest sown from violent, mind-numbing video games and gruesome Hollywood movies that dangerously desensitize those who struggle with mental health challenges. And then add in military-styled weapons and high-capacity magazines to that equation, and tragedy can never be too far behind. You know, there's no easy ideological way forward. If it were only that simple as to blame Hollywood or the NRA or insufficient funding for mental health, then our task could be completed in no time. But I come to you this morning with a heavy heart and no easy answers. Still. I've spent the past few days grasping for solutions and struggling for answers while daring to question my own long-held belief on these subjects. I've always taken a libertarian's approach to Hollywood's First Amendment rights and gun collectors' Second Amendment rights, and I stood by those libertarian beliefs after Columbine, after Aurora, and after Arizona. Those young men who slaughtered innocents were crazy after all and they would have found another way to kill their victims if their guns of choice were not available. But last Friday, a chilling thought crossed my mind as I saw the Times Square ticker over ABC spit out news of yet another tragic shooting in yet another tortured town by yet another twisted son of that community. How could I know? that within seconds of reading that scrolling headline that the shooter would be an isolated middle-class white male who spent his days on his computer playing violent video games. How did I know that it was far more likely that he had a mental condition than a rational motive? And how did I know the end of this story before the real reporting even began? I knew the ending of this story because we've all seen it too often. I knew that day that the ideologies of my past career were no longer relevant to the future that I want, that I demand for my children. Friday changed everything. It must change everything. We all must begin anew and demand that Washington's old way of doing business is no longer acceptable. Entertainment moguls don't have an absolute right to glorify murder while spreading mayhem in young minds across America. And our Bill of Rights does not guarantee gun manufacturers the absolute right to sell military-styled, high-caliber, semi-automatic combat assault rifles with high-capacity magazines to whoever the hell they want. It is time for Congress to put children before deadly dogmas. It's time for politicians to start focusing more on protecting our schoolyards than putting together their next fundraiser. It's time for Washington to stop trying to win endless wars overseas while we're losing the war at home. We've already given up too much ground across America. We've already seeded too many schoolyards, too many shopping malls, too many movie theaters, and too many college campuses. We must give no more ground. Abraham Lincoln once said of this great and powerful nation, from whence shall we expect the approach of danger? Shall some transatlantic military giant step the earth and crush us at a blow? Never. All the armies of Europe and Asia could not by force take a drink from the Ohio River or make a track on the Blue Ridge in the trial of a thousand years. No, Lincoln said if destruction be our lot, we must ourselves be its author and its finisher. As a nation of free men, we will live forever or die by suicide. For the sake of my four children and yours, I choose life and I choose change. It's time to turn over the tables inside the temple, and for the sake of our children, we must do what's right. 
and for the sake of this great nation that we love, let's pray to God that we do.